right guys, so now I'm preparing myself to connect the connecting rod to the piston. Now, before I do this, you have to take into account the orientation of the piston and the rod. I was looking at the spec sheet here, wow, and I noticed that the intake and the exhaust pocket reliefs are quite different. The angle, the diameter, and the depth. So I went ahead and marked each piston, intake side and exhaust side. Also, I put an arrow just orientating which direction is the front of the motor. Now, my machinist already went ahead and file fitted my rings and he marked them with which corresponding cylinder they go to. So I got these laid out from six to one and then on the connecting rod itself you see there's a tang for the bearing and I labeled each rod with an E to show the exhaust side of the rod in relation to the piston so I figured this all out by looking at the stock rod and piston which was never disassembled and looking at the pocket reliefs so the next thing I have to do is we're going to get our Lucas assembly loop and our wrist pin and then we're going to need our locking clips so what I'm going to do first is just unravel each pin wow got to be careful because metal to metal you can really nick something so I'm just going to just going to drop them right there or we could do one at a time but once I start messing with this assembly loop, things will get real slippery. And these packages have not been opened. So, I'm assuming my machinist, he didn't quite do any weight balancing stuff. I think he kind of ripped me off talking about he was going to balance the rotating assembly. He didn't do anything in my opinion. I don't see any shaving marks on the pistons or for the rods of that matter. You know what I'm saying? But I guess because they were like pre-balanced from the factory and they were already within a gram of each other, he didn't have to. So um I feel like he should have still told me up front instead of just charging me for that service so first thing I'm gonna do is um, get the loop I'm gonna put some on the wrist pin just gonna lubricate that okay and drop that right there and then this is kind of messy. We are going to slide this on one end of the piston. And then our rod. Let's see, we have the, the E over here, exhaust side, matching up with our E. Just kind of let that slide in there. Okay, so now we just got to install the locking clip. Alright, I think I want to do all of these guys first and then I'll do all the locking clips. This stuff is messy. Just going to rub the lube on the pin there. I'm going to grab the piston. E. Let's see where's our E. E with our E. Put that slide in there. Wow, these are like so precise fitment.
right, so to install this side, I had to come up with a new plan. So my solution was turn the piston like this, right? With the gap facing down and then use the edge of the piston as a guide to comp help me compress it. So what I'm gonna do is do that again like that. Oh, that worked so nice. Then you just bring it in the rest of the way. Man, it took me like an hour to figure that out. So you're just gonna try to go ahead and pop in all of these guys here. You live and you learn. Oh yeah, this is working nicely. Whoo, we're on a roll, baby. Three down, three to go. Booyah! Wait, this one didn't go in all the way. There it is. Next one. Alright guys, so we got all of the rings on the pistons. And man, let me tell you, I almost screwed this up. I called uh, CP, got some technical support. They instructed me and I had to put that ruffle type ring first, then the two rings that go with it and also the difference between the top ring and the middle ring and that they have to face a certain orientation. So now we have to prep the block to put the pistons inside. We're gonna need some type of break-in oil or mineral oil and we have the ring compressor and we're gonna clock the rings in their resting places before we drop them in. Now, I'm going to go ahead and try to clean up the cylinder walls, make sure there's no debris, whatever in there. Just got some brake cleaner and some blue napkins. Just going to clean up anything that was left behind the machinist. seems to me like the block or not the block the cylinder walls have somewhat of a sleeve or a different type of material in metal versus the rest of the block you can see it's a darker color that could be some type of coating or it could just be I don't know you gotta really I wish I wish sometimes I could talk to the actual engineers that build this stuff and ask some of the questions that I have on my mind. But um, for now, let's just get this cleaned up until it's nothing coming out on the rag. Okay guys, I'm just about ready to start dropping in pistons, but um, first I want to show you something crucial. So when I measured my crank, I, I came up with the standard size. So I got these ACL race bearings and um, 
here's the part number for the application it says standard now you want to make sure that you got the right part in the right box don't leave anything to question so if you look carefully at the bearing itself it's going to be stamped with the part number and the sizing so now this has a U on it that U is telling me that this particular bearing shell goes on the upper portion of the connecting rod and if you look carefully at um, this one you'll see the part number standard size and then it's gonna say uh, L and that L is telling me that this bearing shell goes on the lower portion now I went ahead and checked every single one of the bearing shells to make sure one they're the correct part number two their standard size and three that I have equal number of uppers and lowers so I already went ahead and placed those inside of the rods so now I'm just gonna do this one real quick to show you guys so you gotta make sure you align the tang and just simply press it in place you gotta make sure those surfaces are clean I already went ahead and cleaned them so you can just feel with your finger that they're flush and then what you want to do the same thing with this side grab the bearing shell and push them into the cap alright so that's good so once you have it like that you can just start applying your assembly loop to the bearing surface and maybe the crank as well and then start dropping them in just move up the cylinder wall We have our ring compressor. I have the first piston clocked. So we're just gonna put some oil on the rings there. Gonna get some on the skirts. Get some on the other skirt. All right. Now, this is the exhaust side of our motor. That is the intake side. So we gotta face the rod this direction. Just double check our spring clockage. So I got this one over here. And I got this one over here. Should be about right. Just gonna bring this down slow. First time using one of these ring compressors. Wow. Thing is super easy. I don't wanna make it slam. I'm gonna try to stick my hand up there to catch it. Or you know what? I'm gonna rotate this thing to the side. I'm so scared this is going to slide right through. He's going. <sighs> wow.
think it's in there, man. Let's rotate this guy upside down. Now I'm just checking to make sure the bearing is still seated properly and that it hasn't shifted crazy. Alright, so we're going to take our cap, make sure we align our tangs. Tang with the tang, I believe. We'll drop that in. I'm going to go for our ARP guys. I'm just going to run that up snug. So what I'm going to do is get my torque wrench. I know the torque spec is 50 foot pounds, but what we're going to do is gonna put this thing on foot pounds and then right now I got it on 15, so what we're going to do is work our way up to that 50. So we're going to go 15, 15, then we're going to go 30, 30, you know what I'm saying? This way, we sneak up to our torque. That way nothing gets cocked and out of place. So, let's go to 15. So, first of all, let's snug them up at the same time. Because the port wrench didn't even start counting yet. Take it up to 40.
let's just take a look. Arrow that way. E, I. E, I, arrow. E, I, E, I, E, I, E, I. I know this side is the exhaust side because you have the water jacket here. And also you have the drain and feed lines for the turbo. And also the starter is on the side of the intake manifold. So this side is the intake side of the head. We got to get an oil pump, a vacuum pump, and an upgraded crank hub.